Pauline, good to see you. All right, so let's get started <clears throat> today. This is our, our part. You can put yourself on mute. That would be great. Do you not anybody hear me? I can hear you. Okay. All right. Just make sure that you can. All right. Um, close that up. This, every time I open up this Zoom program, they have new changes to it. And it's like, I didn't see that coming. Nobody told me about that change. So mm -hmm. everything works a little differently. I don't use it on a daily basis. So, um, but this section or this module, this today's classroom session is Zoom session is part two on our mindset mastery. And we talked about it briefly a few weeks ago uh, about the important part of developing a healthy mindset and a good attitude, which will help you keep your attitude. It's gonna help keep your mindset motivated and keep it going. Again, we're, this is a, just a, uh, introduction to how to how to develop and master a, a, a good healthy mindset we're just going to offer here just two simple tools that i use on a regular basis and recommend all my people i work with to to use uh to help keep their keep themselves motivated and keep their attitude high there's many more that you can choose and we'll, we'll talk about a few of them as, as we go through uh so let's just get bring that slideshow back up If I can, let me move that over. There we go. It got minimized on my screen, and I'm not happy about that. Mm -hmm. Let me stop, and then I'll restart the share. Maybe it'll work better that way. Again, the chat box is open. If you have a question that we'll do at the end, uh, you can... Uh, Put, put some chats in, type in as we're going along, and we'll get to that. Where did you go? Come on, get bigger. You're supposed to be large. <clears throat> I'm going to try it again. It's not working like it used to. <laughs> hit share. Choose that. Hit share. Is somebody else coming in. All right. <clears throat> mm -hmm. All right, we got Cindy in the house. Very good. Let me get back to this share. <clears throat> come on, come on, machine. Okay. All right, can we all see that now? Yes. All right. Yes. <laughs> Sorry for that. All right. So this is, <clears throat> again, building a health-based lifestyle, why I call it the prime fit way. Through, this is module three, part two, uh, mindset mastery. Let me get this out of the way. Sorry about that again. 
Attitude is everything. We mentioned this last week. Your attitude towards anything in life, including exercise, nutrition, how you handle stress, how you handle good nutrition, again, how your mindset is, is so important for your success. Your mindset is driven by your attitude. So a good positive attitude will keep a good positive mindset. Again, what is a mindset? It's just basically a series of beliefs people hold about themselves. If you believe that you're angry and mad, you're going to be angry and mad. If you have an outlook and, and mental attitude that you're happy and vibrant and energetic, you're going to be that way. And you can have both a growth and a fixed mindset in different situations. So those are just a couple of things we talked about last week. <clears throat> Again, when you control your attitude, you can master your mindset. And basically to do that, we just use, take necessarily take just a few tools, take control of your routines and your results. And then you add new tools when needed to increase control over whatever motivates you. Again, you start out with one, you start out with two, you find out that they work or they don't work so good. You may need something that you maybe, maybe respond to a little bell. So you put in a different tool to help you at that point. <laughs> so I want to talk basically on mindset is this gentleman cannot pronounce his name very well. This is the story. I had a different one selected. This just came on the Today Show actually last Thursday uh, in reference to this, this gentleman here and what he was before and what he is now. And again, it goes towards attitude and mindset. Despite Bayer Akusan's doctor told him with his current lifestyle, he would only live till his mid-40s. So he focused on diet and fitness and lost half his body weight. At 31, he was overweight most of his life, weighing 500 pounds at his head. Heaviest. People often ask, when you when you were weighing in your 300s, didn't you want to stop? How did this happen? He basically would say, I just carried on with that lifestyle, which is again from that story that aired on the 18th. You know how people say a healthy body, healthy mind? Well, once my body was mm -hmm. unhealthy, my mind became unhealthy too. I stopped thinking about furthering goals because all I kept thinking about is how I was battling my body how to make the pain go away, and his back legs, his feet. You see, the, his weight and his his situation was playing a major toll on not only his physical well-being, but his mental health as well. He felt tired that he would have to sit down to do the dishes or tell kids he was too exhausted to play with them. At Disney World, he had to rent a wheelchair to drive him around because he didn't have any of the energy that he would need to play with them. His wife encouraged him to start walking. Hence, my recommendation number one is to start a walking program. But he lost interest doing anything. He just didn't go outside because his feet would hurt too bad. By the time he hit 500 pounds, he wasn't feeling well at all. He was always tired. He had to take naps. Naps would last two to four hours in the middle of the day. And it prompted him to finally see a doctor. <clears throat> In January of 21, a doctor's visit told him he was diagnosed with severe high blood pressure, high cholesterol, type 2 diabetes. And he told me that I was only expected to live until my 40s. He was 29 at the time. He was also diagnosed with sleep apnea and severe. He learned that a normal healthy person, sleep apnea can occur in about one to three occurrences an hour. He was at 135 breath stoppages per hour. So pretty wow. much it looked like he was sleeping, but his body was never asleep. That's why he was exhausted all day long. It was like he was never sleeping. He started using a CPAP machine and was on five to six medications to help him sleep and to lose weight. Again, like I said, he was 29 years old at the time. His doctor said, you wouldn't live to be your 40. So he had to do something. He went to see his doctor and he took serious efforts and took serious control of his life. Again, one of the actions I recommend. If you don't take personal control and accept the responsibility for your life, you're not going to make the necessary changes to make any major difference in your life. <clears throat> Today, he lost nearly half his body weight, shedding 230 pounds in two years. 
And this is how he did it. He Basically, he had a sugar addiction. So his main goal was to take charge of his sugar addiction. He ate fast food two to three times a week and lots of sugar in his treats like cookies. He was totally addicted to sugar. It is the number one addiction in this country is our addiction to sugar and to sugar substitutes. So just by him focusing on one element in his diet, he was able to start the ball rolling to get control over his life. He was, he was usually consuming 200 grams of sugar a day. He used to drink Coke every day or Red Bull. His sugar addiction was so high, when he cut it out, he went through serious sugar withdrawals. And if anybody's ever done that, you know the headaches are grueling. It, it just mm -hmm. wreaks havoc on you. You have to go through a sugar withdrawal. Even worse than a caffeine withdrawal. Even worse than smoking withdrawal a sugar addiction to go from such a high level of sugar in your diet to going to low or no sugar is a traumatic change on your body. He also looked at what he had to do is take control of his eating habits. He focused on his portion control. So another, so not having this small bowl of soup for lunch, he would have to make some serious changes so that he wouldn't have to. Portion control, I tell people all the time, you'll get that new nutrition session. No more do we use 12 inch, 13 inch, 15 inch plates on our tables. We should all be looking to transition over to seven inch type plates to help you limit your portions. The simple change in your nutritional habit can create you in a better mindset to help you affect your nutrition. He didn't like the word diet. Doctors would tell him, I need to go on a diet. And he said, I don't like that. A diet in itself, listen to this, is not sustainable in any long term. He said, instead of cutting out food, he focused on the portion control. Again, looking back to the size of his meal. Over time, he learned to control his portion, which slowly killed my craving. I still eat everything, but I learned to control it. It took me a year and a half to learn how to control it, and I still crave soda. But I only have it if I really, really want it. And when I do have it, it'll take two sips and throw it away. Same with chips. I would eat a handful, not a whole bag. So I've learned to kill my craving. Again, it's not cold turkey. Cold turkey very rarely works in the long term with people trying to make radical changes in their diet. Small piecemeal changes are the key. Just cutting your portion control sign. size is the best way to do it. He then began to ease into fitness. For the first eight months, he focused on cardio. He started exercising but his heart was weak, so he didn't do weightlifting right away. He said he found activities like walking and running boring, but stuck to it to improve his cardiovascular fitness. He wore a watch to track his heart rate. Again, something that I recommend for most people. And once it was a good number, he started weightlifting. He joined a lifetime fitness gym and have learned so much, not only about lifting, but about mobility, which you get to in the stretching section of the fitness program. Learning how to stretch is important to keep you healthy. Last summer, he completed his first triathlon. He wanted to do something he's never done before. So he Googled triathlon, found the Lifetime Chicago Triathlon. It was a nine-miler. It was a super sprint triathlon, 400-meter swim, six-mile bike, one-and-a-half-mile run. He registered, <laughs> trained, and ended up finishing in a little over an hour. Just like with his diet, he focused on adding fitness to his routine, step by step, routine by routine, and to help him maintain it for the long run, not just for the short term. He wanted to stay young and healthy for his kids. Those were his motivation. Again, finding motivation. We'll talk about intrinsic motivation shortly. His wife and his kids are his accountability, he said. Being able to play with kids, an active five and nine-year-old, keeps him motivated. Some days he doesn't really want to go to the gym or question why I'm torturing myself, but I do this for my kids. Both of my kids are active and play soccer, he said. I see my wife and I think about how she's the person I committed my life to and I don't want to leave her in my 40s. So besides that, changes he has seen beyond go beyond the physical. And this is where we get to the mindset and attitude. He improved his memory. 
He can remember things that he never used to in the past. His productivity at work increased. He's become a better father. His healthy habits are rubbing off on his family and helped him with his kids. They refuse to eat McDonald's or any fast food today, which is not the case before. His personal goals, he's at 270 pounds, once in his target rate of 250 pounds. Training for another triathlon, he pushes himself a little bit more, bit by bit, so in August, he'll be ready to go. He wants to focus, and this is important, on the mental transformation too. He wants to be a personal trainer in the future, but focus on mental health of people who lose weight. That's a specialty. That's a, a special set of, of tools that you need to establish in your own mindset so that you keep your mindset geared up and, and your attitude positive. <clears throat> it's so many challenge to get into the head to get into the head game of losing weight and take that first step. Again, 99% of people go to the gym for one reason, and that is because they don't like themselves. They want to lose weight. So he, he advocates for others. You have to really want it. You're going to have to find that personal goal that you can tag that to. Whatever your goal is, tag the emotional tie to it, and that will help you keep at it. <clears throat> really give yourself seven days to think about making a change before you even act on it. And that's something I never really thought about in the past, uh, that you it's just, it's hard enough to adopt a new habit. But before you can adopt a new habit and actually do it, you have to reconcile it in your own mindset that it's something doable. So take a week to review this new goal, this new habit, and review it on a daily basis so that you can really establish a, a solid foundation before you take a step forward. So let's explore some of those tools for the long term. These are the things to keep that mindset going, keeping you attitude good. Brings it back to, we talked about uh, there's different books. I, I registered or, or, and sent out an email that listed some of the books that are on, on building habits on doing mindset. I'll send it back out again to the group uh, shortly. But there is actually a science to motivation. This Dr. Kate Wolin is a behavioral epidemiologist, specializes in health, psychology, epidemiology, close that, and biostatistics. <clears throat> Number one type of motivation is intrinsic motivation. So in other words, you participate in activity because it brings you joy and personal inner satisfaction. That is key, as opposed to extrinsic motivation, which you participate in activity for external incentives from others, awards, or avoiding punishment. So people get any kind of recreational activity, they like to compete. That's my goal. It keeps me motivated to stay, keep myself physically fit so that I can compete in the manner that I want to. Intrinsic motivation, that internal is so crucial for sustained behavioral change over time. Just short term, win a trophy is not going to keep you going in the long term. Intrinsic motivation is necessary for sustained positive behavior, health habits. Think about it. Think about what your goals are. We went through the goals and, and the routines, how we can establish new goals, how we can follow them. <clears throat> Tool number one and is what I like to call this in our mindset mastery is use short and positive feedback loops to increase motivation. Now think about this. You want motivation. You want feedback as soon as you can. That's the key. If you eat healthy for a long time, year, it may take years to manifest into measurable reduction of lifestyle diseases. You may not know you have heart disease. You may not know you're leading yourself down to, you know, cardio incident in the future based on your diet and your blood markers. So it would take years. So you're going to have to eat healthy for years and years before you have a test to say, hey, I've made an actual measurable dif difference in lowering my risk of lifestyle oriented diseases and improving my lifestyle. It's hard to keep motivated for years, let alone many years uh, to go. Example, eating healthy habits important for a long life then don't offer you that regular motivation you need. 
Example, eating a healthy low carb lunch will reduce afternoon food coma and keep you energized. Those who eat any kind of high carbohydrate types of lunches, find yourself in the afternoon, struggling to keep your eyes open, feeling the lull in your uh, circadian rhythms where it's hard to you to continue to be productive. By eating a healthier lunch, you're gonna get immediate feedback. You're gonna find yourself being more energized, more motivated to keep going during the day. And you can look at that at the end of the day and say, wow, I had a good healthy lunch today, I felt better. Immediate feedback. You now can go to the next day and say, ah, I, I felt good yesterday by eating a good healthy lunch, low carb lunch, let's try it again today, see how we feel at the end of today. Day three, day four, day five. The more you do this, the quicker you get that feedback, the better you're going to feel about the efforts and the return on your investment. So it's the key to have a short cycle to get that feedback as fast as you can. You get that immediate intrinsic feedback so you can stay motivated and thriving. And this is key. This is something that people don't uh, use in a lot of things in life, even in fitness. They look at long-term goals and they work out real hard one day and they say, man, that wasn't really worth it. I'm going to skip that tomorrow. I'm, it's hard to keep to get that ex regular exercise program going because you're maybe not doing enough goal setting and following your goals and tracking your goals to see how you're doing. So tip for shortening that feedback loop. Track your progress. Set daily goals and identifying the intrinsic motivation with more immediate benefit. You look at Bayar, his immediate goal was to be healthy for his family, to be around so he can live past his 40s, because he was quickly headed for an early demise based on his lifestyle. So again, by him taking the intrinsic motivation, his family, to be around for his family, it could be you, it could be anybody else, it could be somebody in your family, it could be just for another type of goal, not necessarily a health goal that you want to you want to get to. So you have to find that intrinsic motivator that you can attach to that effort to keep you going. Go back. Immediate motivated, improved energy, improved mood, and increased productivity. So you're looking for that instant feedback or whatever it may be, whatever it is. Maybe it's just taking the walking program and getting halfway down so you're walking 20 minutes one way, 20 minutes back. If you record how you feel at the end of that walk, it's going to give you immediate feedback so that you can go again to tomorrow and the day after and the day after. Your mood should most likely be improved once you hit that short-term goal and you're ready for the next goal, which all leads to increased productivity. You're going to get more done in your day. Your energy is going to be up. You're not going to be as depressed. You're going to have a better attitude towards yourself by taking these short, small little gains and tracking them. Tool number two in the mindset mastery. Again, there's many tools that we have in our quiver of arrows. We're going to pull out just a couple today. Mindset mastery tool number two, set and track those individual goals. Again, if it's your walking program, get out the 30-day walking program matrix that I gave you all, and it's in the Fitness First ebook. Start at day one, walk five minutes, walk 10 minutes, go back and forth. Track those goals. Check it off every day. When you get down to the end of the day, end of the month, you're going to say, wow, I completed 30 days of walking. I never thought I could. You're going to feel so much better about yourself. You're going to have the added energy that you're going to get. And you've got to trust me on this. It does work. But many people through that walking program and many people have all said, this is the best thing I could do to start slow, let it grow. Don't just start walking a half hour one way and a half hour back. You're not going to compete, keep it up. So you have to start slow and let it grow. So track those individual goals. Start whatever it is, program it is. It could be nutrition. You have a nutritional Goal, use the goal and the habit tractors that, that we talked about and we had in the last session. You've got your coaching worksheet to help you identify the things, 
that you're not doing enough and things you need to do more. So goal number one, put it down there. What is my goal? You know, walking 30 minutes by the end of the month. What are you going to need to stop doing? Stop procrastinating. There's many things you can put in there. Do less of what you need to keep do, what you need to do more of. Start doing it. And you look at this form every single day. And before you know it, you're going to be not needing to look at it every single day because it's going to you're going to entrench this habit into your lifestyle. Here's your habit tracker. Maybe it's drinking a glass of water. We'll get to the sugary drinks scenario. You know, people trying to avoid sugary drinks. How can you do that? By replacing that with water. So, boom, top here on the habit could be drinking, you know, 12 glasses a day or eight glasses a day or 40 ounces, whatever it is that you need. And again, that's different for everybody. The old drink eight glasses or 12 glasses of eight ounce glasses a day is all a bunch of hogwash. Everybody's needs in reference to water and hydration are totally different. It's all depend on so many indicators, your health, medications you may be on. Your, your ability to dispense heat, sweats. Some people sweat more than others. Some people can't build up a sweat. They take too much internal heat. So there's <clears throat> many factors. The amount of exercise you do that will dictate how much water you need. But the number one rule I tell all these people, if you're thirsty, it's you're already dehydrated. When you find yourself, man, I really need a quench of my thirst, you're dehydrated. You need to stay ahead of the game, not to the point where you're drinking so much you're running half the day to the restroom. That's too much. But you should just have a regular habit of every 15 minutes taking a couple sips of water. That's a good place to start. You find you're mm -hmm. not going to need as much food. You're not going to need any. You're not going to need coffee or any other sugary drinks with caffeine in them to get you through the day. Water is very sufficient, but it's something a lot of people don't drink a lot of. Uh, they're so used to getting their liquid in coffee and other sugary drinks and juices and whatnot that they don't get enough water in them. So goal, again, this is the goal. Redu reduce consumption of sugary beverages. Choose to drink water. Track the number of glasses you drink your day. It's, maybe it's an 8-ounce glass. Maybe it's a full 12-ounce glass. Just track it in that tracker. Put down how many glasses you had that day. Simple way to track it. You're going to follow it along, and you're going to get all your all your water habit or your water intake that you need taken in on a nice regular basis. <clears throat> so there are many other tools. Like I said, these are these are some of the top tools to help you gain control. Change your environment. Again, mindset. If you're in a bad environment and it's a depressing environment and you're around people who are, you know, negative Nellies all the time, you're going to be, it's going to rub off on you. Change your environment. Hang around people that are, be supportive rather than not so supportive. If it's an unhealthy environment in a particular living arrangement, change it. Develop that action plan we talked about. We have a fitness plan. We have a nutritional plan. We need a mindset mastery plan. We need to, again, create things that are going to keep us in a better mindset and make it a habit. Make healthy habits social. This is important. This is where we go to people who go to fitness classes. There's a social section to that. There's a social draw to exercising with other like-minded people. Could be family, could be friends, could be neighbors, whoever it is. Your best success will be if you find yourself and attach yourself to a small group, doesn't have to be a large group, of like-minded people and make all those habits social. Everybody talks about them. Everybody, you know, you're not going to talk about what uh, shoes were on sale on Tuesday nights with the woman on QVC that I watch all the time with my wife likes to watch it. Shopping with Sally, you know, shoes on Tuesday or whatever it's called. So again, make it a social connection. In review, again, it doesn't have to be that intense. The part one that we talked about last week or two weeks ago was attitude is everything. 
It's important. <laughs> Motivation drives the bus. So if you're not motivated, you're not going to get yourself instituting new habits, better routines, healthier routines, healthier situations for yourself. We talked about fear and how it's just a roadblock. You've got to learn to conquer your fears um, one at a time. You can't go out and, and change your life overnight because you're afraid of this or that. You won't go to the gym. You don't need to go to the gym. You can go outside and walk. There's so many things people fear. And it's just because it's you're looking at the big picture, not putting in place a method for you to avert that fear by using your strongest traits to build those healthier habits. You can take a fear of exercise or fear of going to the gym and turn it around for your best successful methods. Part two, again, today, attitude steers your mindset. Learn and understand that you got to have a positive attitude. Good habits lead to better results. A good walking habit is going to lead to a healthier you to get you on the road, such as it did for the gentleman who lost 230 pounds and half his body weight. He found his motivation. He created new habits got the short feedback loop that helped him build success. And he tracked his goals and enjoyed small success, successes, shoot, excuse me, which helped him build long-term results. That's the whole key for what we're trying to get you into in a lifestyle type class. It's building that lifestyle on all the foundational pieces. Next, section we'll get into module four healthy nutrition and that'll be our our in-person class it's gonna be not on the fifth as it was scheduled i have a conflict uh that we're gonna move it to the 12th so it's gonna okay. be the following monday uh, june 12th will be our our live in-person in class back at Solon at the community center uh the senior center okay. I'm sorry. Uh, so just just remember that. Uh, open it up for questions. I'm sure you have a question or two about that, that information we just talked about. Just think about it. Two tools is all we talked about. And we can create a better mindset. So question number mm -hmm. one, who's got it? Mm -hmm. Nothing? You know it all? I don't know it all. <laughs> Try to know it all. I keep trying to learn it all and know it all. Um. Let me throw it back on you then. I'll, I'll ask you all a question. Why did you come into the Zoom class today? Why did you join this program in the first place? Let me throw out a, a, a quick answer for themselves. Kim? You have to unmute yourself. Hit the space bar. Yes. This is Gail. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. This is Gail. I'm sugar addicted and I can feel a change on certain days when I do control the sugar, but then I do need a nap when I go out of control with the carbs. So it, exactly what we talked about. So you know what the results are. If you eat yes. poorly, you have too much sugar, you know what's going to happen. You know what your body's going to do. You're going to feel sluggish. You need to have a nap, right? So Boom. So now what do you do when you when before you eat something, think about the results, not wait till after you eat it and the results it's going to give you. Think, ah, if I have this, I'm going to feel sluggish and bad and I'm going to need a bad nap. What's a better choice? So just taking one moment to think about what you're eating and what it's going to do for you. And, and we talked about and we'll get into it in nutrition in the next group is that. Keeping a journal, you know, like you do an exercise journal, keeping a nutritional journal is one of the best tools at your disposal. If you take advantage of it and use a food journal, you're going to, and we'll talk about it, and I'll, show, I'll give you some uh, blank journal options for you. You're going to see immediately how foods affect you. You know, breakfast, lunch, and dinners, or if you're snacking, whatever it is. I want you to, you're going to, you're going to write down what you eat for two weeks. 
everything you eat. But I, I totally recommend because one or two, you know, when people start to say, okay, I, I can't write down everything I'm eating because I'm, you know, I'm cheating on myself. So it takes two <laughs> weeks for you to accept the fact that your your diet is is cyclical just like anything else. Some days you eat better, some days you don't. Some weeks you eat better, mm -hmm. then you go on vacation. And <laughs> then we all know what happens <laughs> when we go on vacation. We don't eat so well. So um yeah. you have you have to keep track on a little longer term to see what you're eating and don't think about it. Just write down what you're eating. You know, you have to be honest with yourself if you want to get the honest results that you're looking for. So just write down, I had an ice cream cone, I had whatever it may be. I had one of those super triple lattes with, you know, 1200 calories. I don't drink that stuff. So I don't know what they taste like, but people love that stuff. So you take one of those, you know, <laughs> within from what I hear, within a few minutes, you're getting that high from that caffeine. Those things are super high in caffeine all that kind of drink. So you're going to feel that. You should be able to say, ha, I felt better. Why did you feel better? You got a little energy kick. Came from the caffeine. Came from whatever the contents were. Having a big bowl of spaghetti is not going to give you that same feeling. I'll tell you that much. It's going to get you that food coma on the other side of it, more likely than not. Uh, so that yeah, all I can tell you, is you have to do the work yourself. You have to start doing a food journal and start writing down what you're eating and then how you feel, you know, an hour after you eat it. Because it's going to take a while for the food to get into your system unless it's a two, an empty stomach and you go right to high sugary, high caffeine, you're going to feel it quicker. But a full meal, whatever it is, is going to take time to digest and, and manifest itself in your, your mood, how you feel, you know, how much energy you have. You feel sluggish. These things all become crystal clear if you do the work and take take charge of this. And we'll talk about that uh, again when we get into the nutrition in the next year. Pam, you had a question? I was just going to answer your um, question about why I joined your class. Yeah. Um, basically, I'm, well, I've been retired for a year now and I want to um, kind of like what you said at the first meeting, I want to live healthier as long as I can. And I needed your guidance to kind of set me on the right track and understand what's important to reach that goal. So for you, it's an intrinsic motivation. You know how you what, what you want in the future. You know what you're going. It's not like your doctor told you, like in this gentleman who lost all the way, his doctor said, you're going to die if you don't do something <laughs> right now. No. You just know you sure. wanted to live sure. a better, healthier life. You needed some guidance to join the class. And guess what? You're still here after three months, right? Exactly. So I know you're motivated. Yes. You know people have dropped out for whatever reason. Uh, they're not doing the live. I don't know if everybody's watching the replay. This is hard work, folks. It's not easy. And, it's, and the people who stick with it are going to get the results they want. The people who give up like in anything else after a couple weeks, they're not going to get the results and they're going to say, well, that wasn't a very good class or whatever the case. No, it's all about, like I said, day one, taking personal responsibility of your life, doing the things you have to do, putting yourself number one. If you're taking care of five other people, whatever it may be, you got a busy work job, you're doing all of these outside things and you don't give time for yourself, you're not going to get the results you're going to, you're going to be happy with. You've got to learn to reshuffle that deck, put you at the top. Take yeah. it yourself first, then you can, that'll all filter down and all those other things are going to get better as you become more efficient, you become healthier, you're able to do more things. So you're doing the right thing. The intrinsic motivation <laughs> in the long term is what's going to get you the success you need, whether it be a lifestyle, developing a lifestyle, or simply starting an exercise program. Uh, mm -hmm. that's why I, I've kept this program pretty basic. I, I've got, like I said, I've got a more in-depth version of this that is, you know, a lot more content. And I felt that I was losing a lot of people because I was giving them too much to chew on at once. So that's why I'm offering you just a couple basic tools and each right. these, these cornerstones to start with. And then when we get done with this program, <laughs> I'll be sharing some 
workshop type things that you'll be able to build upon each of these cornerstones. So you'll be able to help your nutrition. You're going to find ways to keep yourself more motivated. I've got, you know, a lot more things in the, in the toolbox that we can use, but I wanted to get people to see that it's only a simple couple things can get you results and to not overwhelm you. It's, yes. And it's not for everyone. Yeah. You see, it's, you, there's not 60 people here. You know, this went out to everybody in the, in the community center and a small handful of people said, it's for me. You know, that, so that, that's, the, that's the thing. I know that you're here. You're not here because you're court ordered to be here. Your family says you better do it or whatever. The reason. <laughs> you want to be here. And you're, you're going to be, I know that people who want to be here are more successful than people who don't necessarily want to be there. And, and frankly, I don't want them here either if they don't want to be here because yeah. you're, you're, they're, they're not the type of people we talked about being around people who are of like mind and motivate and supporting is way more productive than being around the negative Nellies that are going to drag you down. Oh, you're wasting your time. You've heard it all. You know, you're going to hurt yeah. yourself and be in a nursing home, whatever the case. There's so many examples and things <laughs> that are, are yeah. frankly hogwash in my book. You know, I, I, I've been in fitness for a long time and I know what works. I've seen people with good results and I've seen people give it the yeoman's effort at January 1st and they're out by March. You know, they got their eight weeks in and they quit the gym and, and life goes back to their old ways and habits and they're getting the same results. Uh, you know, it, it, it so helps to be self-motivated. Tommy, you had another question? No. No, you had that? None? Gail, anything else? No. Pauline, question, concern? Well, I I um I can send you a no because mine is just kind of okay. relates to me and I don't wanna Yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, no. I yes, last one was last session was my first session. Okay. So I feel like I'm trying to catch up in my mind, like with a lot of the terms and things that you're talking about. So um, go to go to my YouTube account and all the videos or the only video that's not in there is the very first class. I didn't video that one. I didn't okay. have it set up. All the other classes are videoed. The live ones and these zooms are, are up there on the YouTube channel. And so you can start at the first one and work your way through. Um, and, okay. and it's on your website. It, it's it's not only on my website, no. it's on my YouTube channel, Prime Fit Life. Okay. PrimeFitLife.com uh, YouTube channel. Tim. Okay. Go to YouTube. <laughs> you know, okay, I'll find it. For Prime Fit Life, and yeah. you'll find it, and there are, all the videos are there, uh, and you can just start from day, from the first one. So we have the live Zoom, live Zoom. So you'll be able, you'll be able to catch up. Uh, that's why we we put it out there. I, I you know. I, like I said, I hopefully by this time next year, this is all going to be automated and on my website. You can go through at your own pace. But uh, I wanted to get that information out and start it now with this group so that uh, you didn't have to wait. And and a lot of people do better in this setting. Some people do better in just follow along online course. It's totally totally up to them. But I'm like an in your face kind of guy. I want to be there. I want to see seeing people's eyes. I want to see the feedback <laughs> that I get. <laughs> Because that not only helps you, <laughs> it helps me know that I'm 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 sending the right message and that and that you're buying it, not that you're buying it, but that you're you're able to understand it because some of the stuff can just go right over your head and you're like, I'm I don't want to ask that question. Send me an email, Tim at primefitlife.com, and you and I will get it. Um and I'll answer it back to you. And uh, include your phone number. We can have a phone call if you want to discuss it. I'm more than willing to do that. So uh, I'm here for you to help support you uh, in, in developing this lifestyle. Like, and, and it's going to take time. I tell people it's taken you many years to get to where you're at. You're not going to, you know, make a 180 degree change in your life in six months. It's going to take years, a year, a couple of years. This guy took two years to lose all that weight. And his old goal was just to lose weight. You know, he his attitude got better. His attitude towards exercise, his mindset got better. So look, he took care of two stones by starting with fitness. That's why I include fitness as the first section in this program, because I think fitness first and fitness drives drives your lifestyle by by maintaining your fitness, mm -hmm. creating a fitness. Yeah. You get the results. Mm -hmm. 
And when we get to stress, the last section on stress, if you do all these other things, you're less stressed. So there's less work to do in the, in the stress cornerstone. If you develop healthier nutritional habits, healthier fitness habits, you're going to find yourself less stressed. So you're going to, you're going to just work your way through it. And then we'll throw some tools at you to help manage stress because stress is, you know, in my opinion, is more debilitating than eating bad food. You know, if you're eating really healthy and you're so stressed out of your mind all the time, you're still going to have that heart attack. It's going to happen. Uh, so you've got to work all these things together. But taking care of your fitness first is, the, is in my opinion, like I said, the key to, to where you need to start to build that long-term lifestyle. So mm -hmm. anybody else questions? Is Cindy there? Could you have a question? I am I am here. Yeah. Um I don't have your email address. Um, okay. I did miss the first uh, first two classes. So this okay. is the, my first time here. Okay. Not my first time taking a class from you, right. but my first time yeah. in this one. Um, yeah. Is there any way that I can get the information from the first class and then I can go to your Prime Fit uh, yeah. YouTube well, you, channel? And get my the email, one. you can go to Tim at PrimeFit with two T's life.com. That'll get emailed to me through the business. The website is primefitlife.com. And there are videos. You go to this to this section. Let me see if I can pull it up and walk you through that real quick. Hold on. Let me go to a new share here. I want to share that. New share. Uh, one second, let me get it up here. All right, share screen. Look at that. I'm figuring this thing out as we go here. Where are we at? All right. Everybody see my website there? Yes. Okay. Up along the top, resources, free videos, oh, nice. coaches table sessions. You go to that. I have some coaches table sessions. And that is same information in a little different format. And if you go, if you don't do that, and you go to, let me get up my YouTube page. Let me pull that up. Have two accounts. I want that one. Which accounts? Why is it my channel coming up? Hold on. I'm trying. I'm trying, folks. YouTube Studio. Hold on. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Can you see that? Everybody see that? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. here is. There's all these sessions here that were that are on there. There's there's a bunch of videos uh, from the first session uh, to the to the Zoom to the live sessions there at the center, and then other ones are are, are in the process. There's like ten videos up there right now. I'm just okay. not, I'm not pulling them up right here right now, but they're all on there at uh, my YouTube channel.
All right, let me get rid of that. All right, any other questions? Well, we'll get you up to speed. <clears throat> no other questions? That's good. All right, um, again, it's not the fifth, the next class. It got moved to the 12th. Uh, so okay. we'll be in two weeks, uh, whatever, three weeks on Monday in. Yeah, three weeks. Three weeks on the center for the live impression on, on nutrition. Again, it's, to some people, this is the hardest part of a lifestyle is take, taking control of their eating habits. So there's a lot of tools that are available. There's a couple that we share to get the ball rolling. Start you building that cornerstone up. Uh, and again, okay. in, in all these cornerstones, folks, I don't want you to wait till we're all done to start implementing some of this stuff. Start with what you've already learned. In the fitness program, start that walking program. You know, start mm -hmm. doing the exercises that we talked about. The, the the brief matrix on the exercises, simple exercises. Start slow, let it grow. You just don't quit. You know, that's the the when you when you quit and you lose your motivation because you say I worked, I did a, I walked for thirty days and I I twisted my ankle a little bit and I'm not going to go back to it. Because I don't want to twist my ankle or my, my back was sore. There's many reasons for those kind of setbacks. And you got to expect some robots mm -hmm. setbacks in, in whatever you're doing. Fitness is no different. Attitude, mindset, you're going to have bad days. You know, I, I tell you, get on the get up every morning. I turn my feet. Say, Today's going to be an awesome day. And I say it out loud so that I hear it and I feel it so that I know that I can make today a great day. And you, those are simple things you, you can do to you know, work to work your life better. Uh, it, it all takes, it's okay. different for everybody, folks. Again, uh, but turn, yeah. So don't worry, I, Pauline, I'll get you those buzzwords. We'll, we'll talk about it. If send me an email, I'll answer your email. Uh, I'm, I'm at Sola on Tuesday for my functional class. At everybody should be taking my functional class. I don't know why you're not taking my functional class. We lost you. <laughs> am, am I gone? Can you see me? Hello. You lost me. I'm still here. Can't hear you. You can't hear me? I don't know. I didn't. Well, now we can now. <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> Uh, little you know, my son gl glitch. You know, the internet's not so good. The internet's not so good by my house here in Quinsburg. So, <laughs> um, send me an email. Okay. Functional class. If you want to learn how how to function better in your life, at Solon Center Tuesdays at twelve thirty. It's a good class. Thirty. Twelve thirty to one fifteen. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's probably the favorite class I like to teach as opposed to the other group, the other silver sneakers classes that I teach. This is not a silver sneakers class. It's my class that I developed to get you learning to do functional movement patterns to keep your, keep you moving and functional methods to keep you healthy. Uh, get, teaching you exercises you need to get up and down from the ground, uh, Yes, Tim at primefitlife.com. That is correct. Two T's on fit uh, is correct. That's you my got it. And it, it will get forwarded to me through my Gmail account. Uh, so I will get it. Uh, so other than that, I'll let you all go. I know a little longer than we're supposed to be, a few minutes. But uh, any other questions? Pauline, you have another one? No? Okay. I'll let you all go. Thanks yeah. for coming. Yeah. Be proud of yourself for being here and have a good day. It and uh, we'll okay. get it all done. All right. See you on the twelfth. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll see you. Bye. Bye. Have a good day. Bye. You too.